Greetings esteemed guests and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Karis and I am an artist and creature creator. And today we are going to be delving into one of my favorite creatures that I specifically have created. My most popular creatures are my worry warts. I started making worry warts over 10 years ago and I created these guys around the same time. They're still pretty popular on my site. They're called Bloombles. So on the topic of being a creature creator, one of the things that I like to specialize in is comfort creatures or creature comforts. Basically creatures that are based on solving some sort of a problem that I've had with being able to comfort myself and sharing that with other people because I felt really lonely in my experience and that's why I started making these little friends and I don't want other people to feel alone in their experience. Worry warts are the creatures that you tell your anxieties to. Gloombles are supposed to eat your sadness. <laughs> So without further ado, let's get started. Now generally when I'm sculpting one of my Gloombol dolls, I actually just fly by the seat of my pants, but today I wanted to pretend to be a real designer, so I put down a sketch. And I felt like lately I've been doing a lot of rainbowy stuff, so I decided because I appreciate all aesthetics, we would do something different. Namely the goblin that lives off of things they find on the forest floor aesthetic. So basically he's just a fun guy, get it? Now I actually got the idea for this video while I was sculpting this guy's face, so I can't show you that part, but I can tell you that they were made out of Sculpey. Now I'm just going to be painting this little friend's face with a bunch of acrylic paint and I thought while I was doing that I could share some fun folklore facts about Gloombles. Fun fact number one is that they're actually particularly shy and they prefer to live underneath the floorboards where people can't see them. Sometimes if you had a bunch of stressful stuff going on, a whole colony of Gloombles will live underneath your floorboards and that's called a doom pile. It's a pretty accurate name in my opinion. Fact number two is that their favorite snacks tend to be red things. So beets, cherries, strawberries, anything with a red pigment in it, they love it. And my third and final fact fact for the day is about their forehead sigils. So if the Gloombles belong to somebody and they find them beneath the floorboards, they have a little sigil on their forehead. Those sigils will tell you your fortune, so maybe something to be wary of or something to look forward to in the future. It's there to protect you. So this sigil on his forehead I designed to be a heart healing sigil. It's about opening up your heart and letting the sunshine back in, which I thought is pretty cute. Now in case you missed any of that while we were talking, I buffed up some of the layers of paint and I also added some pretty flowers, the sort of blood red ombre, as well as some mushroom style tips to the horns. I also wanted it to look kind of like it had been eroding on the forest floor for a while, so I added these sort of moss marks that led up into the red. Next up is another key feature of the Gloombo, which is the tentacle arms. We had to roll those out of polymer clay and I do this by making little cones and then slicing the tips off. You have to be very particular and make sure that they are even, otherwise things will not look right. I did decide to get a little bit experimental and I'd never heard of anybody using pencil crayons to draw on polymer clay before. I found the technique to be interesting, but ultimately it didn't pan out the way that I wanted to and fortunately enough it was easy to wipe it off with my thumb so that I could use paint. I forgot to paint a base layer of white before going in with my red so it didn't show up very well. Make sure that if you're going to do a painting on black that you use a little bit of white in your paint at least as the base layer. Once I was satisfied with all the detail that I had put into the arms, I put a thick coat of varnish on top just to protect my painting. It wouldn't be one of my videos unless I tried something that I had no experience with, so today we are trying some cosplay. Cosplay is supposed to be just like polymer clay, except it's a lot more durable, so if I used it for something, say like mushrooms on top of somebody's head, they wouldn't break. Is it supposed to just fall apart like this? Okay, I see. Okay, you gotta condition it. Like a brick of rubber cheese. I'm just gonna use a little bit of this wire to give it something to hold on to so that it's more structurally sound. Oomph. I wanted a lot of variety in sizes for my mushrooms, so we did a bunch of different shapes. That'd be a better way for me to do this because right now uh, this is looking, it's looking pretty bad. It's like a intestine corn dog. I also hope that you guys will excuse any unfortunate anatomical resemblances that these mushrooms have to Something that's not very good. Basically, my husband walked in while I was sculpting these and asked me why I was making a cat butt. After assembly though, I was pretty impressed and cosplay actually stands up to a lot of the reviews I've seen. It's durable and it was really easy for me to paint. I hope that you guys will excuse me. I know that these are three different shapes and that Amanita mushrooms have a very specific shape. I was going for more of a fantasy vibe and I wanted a bit of differentiation, so these aren't actually Amanitas. I know that I have painted them red. Let's just go with the fantasy realm vibes. Please don't get mad at me if you are a mushroom enthusiast. I also did a thin coat of acrylic paint mixed with water to give them that sort of I've been soaking in algae all by myself for the last hundred years vibe that we have grown to love. I coated everything with some lacquer and then I realized that I didn't have everything that I needed to complete this project and I had to leave the house. I have to leave my house now to go to Michael's, which I hate. No, I don't hate Michael's, I hate leaving my house. And I've got potatoes, I'm ready. <laughs> I 
cannot resist the glitter. There was a really nice lady behind the till and she asked me what I was making and I told her that I was making a doll and she was like, oh my gosh, I just love seeing what people make. You gotta come back and show me. And I'm like kind of wondering if I should because the doll's gonna be a little bit scary, but I don't know. She just seemed really enthusiastic and nice. So maybe I will come back and show her. <laughs> I hope she still likes me if I do. <laughs> Having returned from our difficult pilgrimage, it's time for us to get back to work on building this body. It took me a little while to figure out how I was going to get the fun fur to mesh with the felt and also make sure that I had the right size for the body so that things didn't look too gargantuan. But I didn't really use a pattern, I just sort of eyeballed it. I've made hundreds of these dolls and all you need to do is make a little curve and then a cut at the bottom so that they've got something to sit down on. Using the slowest setting on my sewing machine, I then went along the edges and just very gently meshed the two together. I wanted to do this before embroidery so the hoop had enough fabric to hold onto and I also painted some spooky squiggles to kind of mesh the two colors together a little bit better. How about I wait for it to dry before I do this part, huh? A very scientific process. I have put it over top of my vent. After a couple of hours, it was actually dry and ready for me to put inside of the hoop and I marked a line where I wanted the base of the doll to be so that I wouldn't embroider past that point. I'm a little bit nervous about this part because I've never done this before. This is a technique that I thought up like today. So I guess we're gonna see how it goes and if it works out. This made up technique was actually just using a pencil crayon on the felt to draw out your design so that it was easier for it to be embroidered. And it worked relatively well, except for after I sharpened the pencil, it got stuck in the felt. So if you wanna try this at home, that's something to bear in mind. So this is probably gonna be my favorite part of this project. I've got everything in its nice little wheel here. I'm gonna pick away a little bit of this on my desk and then I'm going to go and curl up in my bed and just relax and watch garbage TV and whittle away at this project and I will see you guys tomorrow when all the embroidery is done. I didn't get everything done before I went to sleep but when I woke up in the morning I found these beads that looked like Lily of the Valley so I added them on and they were the perfect finishing touch. It's time to play everybody's favorite game, where did I drop the needle? Oh yeah. Once I had finished all of the embroidery and was thoroughly in love with the piece, I realized that this fancy friend required a bow to be as distinguished as I felt they deserved. Also, fun fact, you can use a lighter to seal the edges of ribbon so that it will not fray. I then released this creature from its binds and then decided that it was time to cut it into its actual final shape. Now you might notice that once I start sewing it, I actually hand stitch it. It's because with fun fur, you can have a lot more control if you just use your hands. Sometimes when you do the stitching with a machine, you'll get a nasty looking seam or the fur will get stuck in a way that you don't want. You have a lot more control if you hand stitch your fun fur. Just be careful that you're not as clumsy as me so that you don't poke yourself and have to wear a band-aid for the rest of the episode. Ow. Oh shoot! Ultimately though, I definitely feel like the pain was worth it because wow, was this ever such a cute base and I couldn't wait to finish the doll at this point. I'm just using some regular old polyester stuffing. You can get this from Walmart. It's really cheap, 10 bucks a bag. I recommend if you're filling a doll like this to make sure that you use enough stuffing that it's really firm so that everything holds and doesn't droop or fall over. I also recommend putting something a little bit heavier in the bottom so that it has an opportunity to stand. I personally like to use rocks. Oh my god, I just dropped this on the ground, but it's fine. Oh, I gave myself a heart attack. Excuse me, sir, while I shove these rocks up your butt. Nothing to be alarmed about. It's a fairly simple procedure, and you won't feel much. Anyways, now that his butt is full of rocks, just like nature intended, he's got a little bit more of weight to him, and he feels kind of alive when you hold him. Plus, he's going to balance a lot better when you put him on a table or a shelf. You can see here how the rock butt procedure really helps him to stand on his own two stumps. Now it is time to assemble all of our finished pieces, and we are going to do that in a very unceremonious way with just a bunch of hot glue. The combination of the fun fur with the hot glue does a really good job of holding on to stuff, so it's just a matter of cramming things in places and hoping that stuff sticks. I also found a bit of moss kicking it in my craft stash, and I decided that I needed to glue it onto the hump of this back because frankly, if you're gonna be carrying a heavy load of mushrooms, you really need that soft cushioning of the moss. It's just fairy aerodynamics, guys. And now friends, without any further ado, it's time for the moody glamour shots.
today's video, I hope that you will consider subscribing to my channel, maybe clicking a couple of buttons to show the robot overlords that you like the things that I make. Frankly, I couldn't be more pleased with how our little Gloombull turned out. I love these little Tinker Bells on her belly. I had a lot of fun making this doll, and if you guys would like to see me complete the other two blank faces, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your suggestions for what other styles you think I should make of the Gloombulls, and I actually think that I might include her in one of my upcoming shop updates. So if you are interested in supporting me in that way and finding out when I will have her in the shop, feel free to sign up for my email list. You'll get notified there. Thank you for joining us today. Remember to be kind to those people that are grieving or going through a hard time, even if that person's yourself. Make yourself a cup of tea. Okay, I love you. Bye! I need y'all to know that I turned off the camera like 10 minutes ago and I'm still alone in my office going... It's a sickness. <laughs>